Howdy y'all, this is Riley, the DM for Tavern Tales. And this is Crusale, the player for Tavern Tales. And it feels like it's been a while since we've since we've been back to the tavern. Yeah, it's been uh see we were at RTX and then it's been I think it's been about it's been three weeks since the last episode released. Maybe four? That sounds that sounds about right. Well, in that case, let's start today with a quick little refresher. So last we Last we left our heroes, they were investigating the lower levels of the Sacred Shrine. They discovered the remnants of some kind of fey sort of prison underneath, and below everything there was a trapped hag who had risen up malevolent spirits to become a scarecrow, and through the power of a magical artifact from the cleaning staff of a great and powerful wizard, she had been creating a tree home with the Scarecrow as her master. Our heroes narrowly defeated her mm. by causing the home to disappear underneath all their feet and drop them all down to the ground. And that was when they were resting up and noticed on their simultaneous, simultaneous parchment a gift from the half-orc Baron Rockfist that... Something was happening in town, and he needed their help. And I believe that was where we left it. We had not, we had not gone anywhere, not headed back up. Yeah. Well, it became. A, it, it, we. I thought that I was. Gonna, I thought that I said that. Yeah, they were going to rush back home yeah. as, as soon as they saw it. So, obviously, they're going straight back. They're not worrying about like being quiet or stealthy or anything. They're just going quick as they can. All right. They make it back uneventfully. Nothing, nothing particular. Nothing particular happens. They manage to go back same path, cut out to the road, down the road as fast as they can. As you're going down the road, you don't notice anything in particular different with the town. Like you don't see smoke rising. You don't see anything out in the hills in the hillside area. Nothing to suggest there's problems. Hmm. But this seemed like a very serious guy. Baron Rockfist, he would not send you some kind of strange communication like this without there being a reason. So, as soon as you get back to your, to the outcast's sort of homestead, you notice that the workers are not there. Okay. And down, it's a good ways down to town, but it's within eyesight for maybe for Kana. She has especially sharp eyes. You can see there seems to be some sort of business happening at town, Bustle, bustling going on, you see big loads of something moving around. Baron Rockfist is at your, at your home, ready to explain what's happening. All right. Uh, he comes up, he comes up and sees the group of you, sort of looks back and forth, locks eyes with Tukra, and says, I've noticed some strange things happening with the orcs and the goblins in the area. I need you to investigate for me. Why me? You are... You seem like the responsible one here. Tukra, he sort of side glances towards Ianji. Why, sorry, Ianji's a different person. Um, <laughs> oh. toward, I've got... It's been a long week, don't there's judge a, me. There's a lot of names here. Yeah. He glances over towards Kana. Uh, he's sort of side glancing towards Kana because he's not usually the people person. Usually, Kana is the one who deals. Either Kana or Kale usually deals with mm -hmm. uh, with uh, orders of business. And usually, yeah, Kale's Kale is sort of the silver tongue you know, schmoozer, and they sort of defer to Kana as the de facto businesswoman. Okay. So he's uh, just he's kind of just glancing over at Kana, just hoping yeah. that she'll pick up him. She she looks up. Goes, <sighs> all right, all right. Yeah, okay, so what's going on? Well, you know that there are goblins in the area. You cleared this, you cleared this den from them. Mm -hmm. Normally, that is about as big a group as you'll ever see. Three, four goblins at once. If you've got the whole town mobilized, I'm guessing that we're dealing with something on a larger scale? Yes. This is a band of... I saw... How many, how many did... Jor L C. My brother was scouting and he he swore he saw easily twelve 
13 goblins together led by four or five orcs. Clearly a raiding party. On a How scale close? we haven't seen in years. How close? No more than one day's journey from town. Are they encroaching Maybe. or are they just randomly moving? They were they were going with purpose. They were being led by the orcs. It was a planned movement. My brother could not tell whether they were attacking something or return or hunting. He just knew they were moving with purpose in military style towards a point. He didn't feel com- he didn't feel safe advancing any closer than that. Fair enough. I don't think anyone here is strong enough to combat a raiding party by themselves. But he did he did follow them from a safe distance and saw they return to a point out in the fields to the southeast of here. Hmm. It was a large subterranean structure. Uh, there was a cave mouth visible within a within a hill. It seemed pretty pretty small, but visible from far off. Uh, and out of character, this is the cave structure that Kana noticed when she was first going down to the sacred shrine. Huh. Right off of the road. All right. If if he gives detailed <clears throat> enough destruction, uh, instruction, she would state that she yeah, would state she, to the guy that she, she would knows recognize, the place. She would recognize the ba- the direction and the location. Okay, then she would relay to Kale and Tucker that she knows the the place. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that Baron will feel some relief in knowing that he won't have to gu- guide them or anything like that. Yeah, he he seems clearly relieved when Kana seems to like acts. She knows where it is. She knows how to get there. She's confident in going to that location. He then, he goes on to say, I need you to go in there and find out what has caused this change. You might see a large group of goblins like that within their own warren, within their cave, but they don't wander out in groups that large. Goblins are cowardly. They stay safe where they can. It's only the rare, brave goblin that comes out and fights. All right, that, Kale's just going to, He's gonna grin, and he's just gonna say, and he's just gonna, you know, clap Baron on the shoulder, and say, "We've got this." And Khan is just gonna look over at him and just shrug, look, and Tucker is just going to, well, he'll just grunt. It's just a, <clears throat> Kale's, Kale's optimism is infectious. Baron has something of a worried look on his face, but he says, "I'll, I'll leave it to you." I'm going to go continue help to help the town with preparations. Before I go, I'd like to offer a quick prayer for your safety. He uh, holds up his right hand, which has a small ring with the symbol of the All Father on it. Odin? A uh, different All Father. Got it. Same, not, not same naming scheme. No. Oh. His name is the All Father, but he's not the All Father Odin. He's a different god called the All Father. Cert? It's a god I've made up. <laughs> okay, got it. Sorry, I thought what other All Father? I guess Cert is sort of the All Father of Muspelheim, but I mean any any progenitor god is tech, could technically be called the All Father. True. They generally would just have different naming schemes. All but right. This is a. But this is for your own creation, and but yeah. they would know. Uh, yes, they, this is the party would know. Particularly Kana, who Kana and Kale, who grew up in like town areas where there was mm-hmm. a lot of multi-faith stuff. Okay. The Allfather is very common in there. It's in the same, He's in the same pantheon as uh, Ignobilis. Oh, okay. And Ignobilis's icon is actually a basically like a joke on the Allfather's icon. Huh. So that statue of Ignobilis where it was the uh, kind of like proud warrior man with the multiple arms, mm-hmm. that is the Allfather's symbol. But the Allfather's like, items are all different. Okay. They're... can't remember exactly what it is. It's something like a... like a plat, like a hoe, a sword, a... like a wooden spoon, something like a cooking utensil of some mm-hmm. sort, a book, like some, a book, something for education, and one other thing. Huh. And then one empty hand. So he's got six arms? Mm-hmm. Got it. And Ignoblis kind of, like, is stealing the icon to make himself seem more real. 
All right, just another element of ignobilis ridiculousness. But um, Fair he kind of he holds it up, he kisses it, and holds it out, holds it out to the sky, eyes closed, very silent, very solemn. And then he hand down one eighty and starts marching away silently. All right, kind of just gonna turn. Well, I I guess we better get moving. Should we not go back and get? Provisions? Uh, or is this just going to be a day trip? Probably a day trip. I, I would think, um, it's not, the, the, yeah, the, uh, tunnels aren't, or the, uh, the cave entrance and the tunnel complex aren't that, aren't that far away. I made it there in about an hour or two. So we should be fine. All right. So do you guys head right out? Uh, oh, that's right. I forgot about that part. Hmm. Um, Perhaps you should go inside first. Yeah, good idea. Um, so yeah, there. Uh, yeah, Con- kill. I mean, you do have like things to drop off. Yeah, things you picked up. True. Kale's gonna. Sh- yeah, and actually, Kale's carrying most of it, so he's actually gonna shift the pack on his back that ca- is carrying the owl bear like, feathers and claws. Make everything jingle a little bit to be yeah. like, hey, maybe we should drop off this fifty-pound bag. Yeah, and he's just gonna just. He's not even going to say it. He's just going to walk. He's just going to trudge back because he's tired and it's been a long hike back and a very fast hike back. Mm-hmm. So Kana and Tukra, having recognized this, are also going to walk back. They're just going to be dropping off their stuff. And also, it's probably good to stop in and say hi to everybody. Well, nobody's there. Oh, right. I thought yeah. that. I thought that at least um, the husband and wife would be there because it's not sort of their home now. Every everybody is in town working on putting up walls, putting up defenses. That is- Making like torches and vats of oil and stuff like that that they can use for defense. All right. You do, however, walk in and find a wood elf. She is sitting in the only chair left over from the only chair left over that the goblins didn't completely break. Green, green eyes, very pale skin, fairly tall. She's almost as tall as Kale, I believe. Right? Yeah, Kale is. Six foot eight, or six foot even. Oh, exactly as tall as Kale then. Oh. Um, and she looks kind of quizzically at you and says, Kale? Oh. Kana? Tukra? Are you the Outlanders? There we go. She's got a very melodic voice. I'm trying to make her different from Kana, but my voice acting is not that good yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but as her, as her eyes are, gonna, are going over each of them, mm-hmm. she's going to stop on Kale for a second. And there's going to be this slight twitch in her mouth, and a, almost like a, and her cr- nose is going to crinkle for a second, like she's like smelling a, something disgusting. Like a grimace, like you notice something yeah. gross. But she quickly sort of covers it, off, it over. Or she well, she just gets rid of it quickly. Okay. And uh, she says, "I am Cypress Jokal. I've come in the hopes of joining your your group." And uh, Khan is going to walk forward and uh, offer her hand in a shake. And mm-hmm. Cypress will return it. Um, and Kana's going to say, Welcome. Uh, are you open to a trial by fire, by any chance? Cypress will uh, Cypress will actually just nod. She's been in town, I'm guessing, long enough that she's seen everybody's panic. Uh, she got into town basically last night while y'all were still out, like, resting up in the place, which was the same time as the report of this kind of orc warband, orc and goblin warband came in. So she so would have seen everybody She's seen nothing thing. but the fervor of like, oh my god, we're all gonna die. Alright, and she'll say, I'm trying to channel my best Lady Galadriel here. It would seem that our services are needed if, uh, if your pamphlet is to be believed, and Kana is gonna, well, Kale and Tucker are both looking confused because they didn't know anything about any pamphlets, yeah. but... Kana has been busy while, Kana, while the she shrewd was, businesswoman that she yeah. is. But she was passing out pamphlets before she even arrived in uh, in Forest uh, Forest Home. That's why she was so late showing up to the party was that she was trying to p- pass out paraphernalia to get the word about. Mm-hmm. She was trying to advertise, along with her own personal stuff. Yeah. All right. So uh, Kale's gonna Kale's gonna reach for it and he's going to notice that Cy- that Cypress quickly pulls her hand away when he reaches for mm-hmm. the pamphlet. Or once he grasps the pamphlet, she quickly just jerks she, like, her hand immediately away. Immediately lets go. Yeah. 
and he's going to just shake it up. He's just going to yeah, register, Ser- register that later. in his ear, like, yeah. don't worry about it. Some register people that have later. their own stuff. Yeah. And he's going to look at, over the pamphlet, and it just says, Wanted, able adventurers to join a, a, growing, a growing enterprise. Uh, please, upon reading this, please get in touch with, and uh, she's going to have listed a few people that you made contact with in major cities. Oh, okay. Like, she'll so it's have like her, her, her contact network. back back in her hometown, yeah. back in Leo, or in uh, Laurel. Yeah. One of the major mercenary co- companies in uh, Lyon. Yeah. Just people that she's made contact with who uh, she was reaching out trying to find people. Okay. So, yeah, uh, Kale's just going to, he's going to look over his girlfriend and, with, and uh, just smile approvingly. Just very, yeah, very impressed. Yeah. All right. And, uh, but yeah, uh, Kale's just going to say, well, looks like there's not much more to say. Yeah, if you feel like joining us, please, uh, we could use all the firepower we could get. Um, what exactly are your proficiencies? Or what, what, what do you do in terms of adventuring? And Cyprus, uh, this time she's not going to falter or anything like that. There's, she's just going to say, I am from a, uh, I'm from, uh, I'm from the forests of Lyon. There's a small monastery that my family that has uh, run for generations of, of our clan. And, uh, I've been sent out into the world to try and prove myself to my order. Uh, so I've just been about learning or honing my craft and, You'll find that I'm quite proficient in uh, melee combat. That is my main, my mainstay of my profession as of right now. And it seems that this will be a good chance to put it to the test. For those right. of you listening, uh, just to flesh out a little bit more, the Cypress is indeed a monk from a uh, from a forest monastery. She, yeah, her the entire it's a elven monastery. Mm-hmm. Just so, but she's been and. Uh, We'll find out more about her background as the time goes on, but she yeah. just know that she is a level four monk of and of the way of the open fist. So she deals a lot of different uh, attacks with her key that have to do with melee combat. Yeah, good old honest frontline hitting stuff. Yeah, and speedy hitting stuff. Oh yeah, how much speed does she have? Level four monk. I think that with like as a wood plus, elf plus ten or plus fifteen, and then at, wood elf gets the plus five anyway. She's at forty five speed. All right, that's she's, not so. That's not so bad. Well, but she's still blazing around a lot faster than anybody else in the party. Oh yeah, yeah. So all right. Um, with that, uh, they'll just deposit their stuff, get sort of primped and ready to ready mm-hmm. for combat. Just any uh, grab a quick bite to eat if they could find anything, or if they, just grab some rations. Yeah. Um, they'd be able to get rations. Uh, Cypress would have her own stuff already. Yeah. Probably slightly different monk, slightly different food because. Both she is a monk from a monastery and she is a wood elf. They eat kind of different, kind of different and nuts. fare. She she focuses mostly on fruits and nuts, yeah. not not Very much in the way of food rather than yeah. or like gathering food rather than hunting. Yeah, she's not, and she's uh, yeah, she's not one for killing animals for her meal. Mm-hmm. All right, so once you have all that, you've acquainted yourselves. You kind of get ready. You've discussed tactics as you're doing this. I would I would assume. As yeah, adventurers would do. Kale and, or yeah, Kale and Kana explaining how they usually fight. Unless Kana is out, you know, shooting down foes from afar, they're side by side doing the scor- the stinging mm-hmm. scorpion. Tukra just says, "I turn into big things, and then I maul things. Don't worry about me. I'll just take care of myself." Man, I like Tukra. <laughs> me too. I like role playing oh, Tukra. That's so silly. All right, so um, so you get all that together, you have your you have your stuff, and you start to head out on the road to go down to the tunnel area. You get uneventful travel again. Nice. So you manage to make it out to this kind of hillock area. It's there. It's mid afternoon, so it's clear light, clear stuff, clear sun and stuff. As you get within sight range. I would I would assume Kana starts to warn of like, all right, let's be careful. Let's advance slowly. We're not going to rush right up to the front of the cave entrance. Mm-hmm. And they're keeping an eye out to try and see, like they're looking, seeing, is anyone there? I'd like you to make a perception roll for me. 
Uh, should I apply that to each character or? Um, take it with your highest bonus. Got it. Uh, so you said. Or actually, perception. Actually, what's your marching order? Who's who's in front, middle, back? I would have. Actually, Cyprus is going to take up the vanguard position. Yeah, I'd say probably Cyprus or Khan makes yeah. the most sense up front. Cyprus is going to take the yeah. front. Uh, Kale will actually follow behind Cyprus, and Khan is going to take up the rear guard with Tukra. Okay. Since Tukra is going to, until they actually get into range of fighting somebody, he's going to stay as a healer, and Khan will have her bow drawn. All right. So then I want you to use Cyprus as the perception roll. That's good, because Cyprus also yeah. has plus five perception. We're going to start... Basically, from now on, I think I'm going to do it. It's either the front person or the back person does the perception roll. Got it. Depending on what's happening. All right. She rolls a 14 plus 5 is a 19. All right. So you notice that there is nobody at the front. There is nobody out at the front of the cave entrance. Mm -hmm. The ground, however, is well trodden and almost almost muddy from recent travel. So there are people, there are orcs and goblins out and about somewhere within this hilled area you're in. So you need to okay. be careful. Would okay. you like to advance carefully, quickly, or at a normal pace? Um, I'm going to advance carefully. Okay. So make a stealth roll. Okay. With, hmm... Is Tucker wearing heavy armor? No, Tucker doesn't wear... He has a... Um, or not uh, Tucker, I mean Kale. Uh, Kale is currently wearing Chainmail, so yeah. I just, well, okay. he's medium armor. Oh. Or well, no, Chainmail is heavy armor. Chainmail... It? it might be medium, but it does dis it does impose disadvantage, I believe. Okay, yeah. Uh, in that case, give me... Also, am I able to apply... Well, actually... Uh, I mean, I, you can make this choice before well, what else you have move. Matt? Wood elves have Mask of the Wild, so they're actually able to obscure themselves even in the... That just means they're able to hide when yes. it's, like, just in, like, light rain or something. Lightly obscured by foliage, heavy rain, falling snow, mist, and other natural phenomena. All that means is, like, yeah. um... So if you were standing in an open field, you wouldn't yeah. be able to take the hide action. Right. But if, if, but it, was if raining, it were it was raining cool. really... If it were raining decently heavily or snowing or something, mm. even in an open field, you could hide. You could take the hide action. Okay. Yeah. Um, which, this will be a stealth, a stealth check, okay. so let's do, give me Cypress, Kana, and then Kale's check. Okay. And we need two out of three for success. Cypress has got, let's see, stealth will be under, where is stealth? Dexterity. Oh, Billy, really, right. So plus six on that. Okay. That's a 17 in total. Okay. For Cypress. Now give me Kale at disadvantage. Oh, boy. He's at a negative one to stealth. <laughs> I believe. Let's uh, see. Yeah, negative one. This is gross. You've got an expected roll of a four. And that's a 14 or a 12. Right, so, so that's an, an 11. 11 total. Yep. All right, and give me one more for Kana. Normally. Right. She's got stealth at the wazoo, as far as I remember. Yep, she's at plus eight. All right, this should be a cakewalk. All 17. Right, 17. You manage to, together, Kana and Cypress manage to kind of hide the sound, hide the sound of Kale's moderate bumbling. But you get close enough, you see that uh, now you can see that muddy kind of covered ground mm -hmm. was from a force leaving by Tukra's best estimate maybe 45 minutes ago. Like, as you were, it went out as you guys were coming down to go to this place. Okay. So, and based off that, you can see the direction they were heading is not directly towards Forest Home, but it's heading out in a way such that they might be moving out of vision of Forest Home to then come in as a strike. So there might be a large raiding party out of the cavern going towards Forest Home right now. The cavern itself may be less well guarded as a result of that. So the question is, do I go back and make sure that the that forest home is safe? Or do I go in, try and clear it out, and then wait for the raiding party to come back, even though mm -hmm. they might have already hurt people? 
this is going to become a discussion between the group members. Uh, I think that the general consensus after a little bit of discussion would be that they can. I think that they can trust the vill the villagers to be able to defend themselves or to be wary enough to be able to actually keep you know make sure the orcs didn't make any pressing charges mm -hmm. or anything like that because yeah and uh especially if they've mobilized and started putting up defenses the orcs yeah. aren't going to just charge in without having their full force behind it i would also say uh in general the party would feel that baron baron rockfist is of equal or greater strength to them mm. so he he being back there would definitely aid in the defense of the town future note to self don't mess with baron rockfist all right, so you think you're going in? I think so, yeah. All right. Uh, advance. How would you like to go into the cave? I think I'm going to have Kale actually take up the Vanguard position, thanks to his... Uh, well, do, remind me, do orcs have dark vision, or would they know yes. that? Okay. Um, ooh. Maybe Tukra would? Who would know that? Tukra? But he's not a ranger. Rangers will probably know better. Kale was with a bardic troop? Yeah. He would know that. Okay. He would know, he would know it knowledge? through some kind of... No, Storytelling or something like that? He would know it because like one of the... There's classic big plays where yeah. they fight against orcs. Story, uh, the story of the sneaking... Of the, uh, of the dark... Uh, mm -hmm. Or the uh, dark hand of Grumpsh or something like that. Yeah. Something where it's like a hero has to <clears throat> overcome amazing odds even, even though he's in the dark with all these orcs who can see him. Mm. So, all right. yeah. But Kale being... Uh, being an Asimar also has dark vision. Does he have dark vision? Yeah, I thought he just had. A... Yeah, Asimar have dark vision. That's so a... oh, Cypress also Elf. has dark vision. Asimar have the light spell. I thought. Uh huh. Yep, they also have dark vision. Huh. Why do they have dark vision? That's I don't know, so but weird. I love it. That's unnecessary and weird. Yeah, but okay. Yeah, if you want to confirm that, go ahead. I I want to make sure I have that right too. I don't have that book today. <laughs> Whoops. Either way. All right. Um, I mean, you have dark vision in the party anyway, yeah. so it's not that big a deal. So I think actually, yeah, they probably actually have Cypress go ahead because Kale is loud and clunky. Yeah. If they want to actually get the jump on somebody, it's probably best to mm -hmm. have the stealthy dark vision monk. You do need to remember, it. though, two of your members right now are basically going to be blind when they're down there. True. Well, that's they won't what, be able to see. Well, that's why Kale's going to stick with them. He'll actually mm. be guiding them okay, down. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna actually give like some space. Yeah, Cypress like, is send gonna Cypress scout. as a scout ahead. Yeah. Okay. So she's looking to prove herself, and they're looking to utilize a new team member. So mm -hmm. good chance for her to show what she's got. All right. What is Cypress's passive wisdom? Uh, or uh, fifteen. I actually have that calculated on her. I don't have that on anybody else. Uh, all it is is a well, ten plus wisdom modifier, and plus perception she? if you have. If you have proficiency, if you have proficiency in perception, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, so it would be fifteen then plus two and plus three and then yeah. plus ten. All right. Okay. Fifteen. So as Cypress is scouting ahead, she notices there are kind of set up in the sort of downward slope. The cave mouth sort of opens out wider on both sides, and there are trip wires set attached to some sort of hanging up device. They look kind of like wind charms, but they're made out of bones and bits of tin bits of metal and bits of glass and stuff. It looks like if you hit the trip wire, it will trigger that and make a big kind of crashing loud noise, make some sort of alarm. Would you like to try and disarm it or would you like to have everyone just try and avoid it? I think she's going to having had a chance to coordinate with everybody before leaving i think mm -hmm. she would actually run run back run back and, and get kind of to yeah disarm. exactly okay so because that would be a sleight of hand bonus yeah that's what i would go with okay so kind of has we're actually a, a thieves tools rule oh okay yeah she has thieves tools all right so all give right. me uh thieves tools dexterity so dexterity and proficiency so plus four with proficiency you said yep. So, plus six. All right, go ahead. Uh-oh. That's an 11. Not the best All start. All right. Well, that's a start. <laughs> so, as Kana is examining the wire, looking for, looking for where it attaches to the string, looking for how it triggers to fall and make its clattering noise, she thinks she's fine. She thinks she's fine. Finds, like, the point 
right where the string attaches attaches to a hinge or pulley sort of area, mm -hmm. so she can snip it and hold on to it to keep it from falling. As she goes to grab it, she slips and it clatters down to the ground, making a large, like, crash, tingling, sort of shattering noise. Uh-oh. It echoes down into the cave's mouth, and you hear... You hear a first surprised goblin voices, and then a loud, a loud orcish yell. Uh, orc orcish and goblin are kind of like corrupted common, hmm. and what you can make out is, why did you stop working? The goblins are being the asked orc. that? Yeah, the orc is shouting that at the goblins. It's funny enough, actually, I think I had... Nope, nobody knows orcish. All right, so you don't, you can't get the whole thing that he says, but what parts you can understand basically say, why did you stop working? Okay. And you hear kind of knocking away at stone sort of sound, like pickaxe on stone. And it sort of, it hurries. Okay. Would you like to wait a little while? Would you like to advance further? Would you like to... No time like the present. All right. That's at least, that's the... Uh... <laughs> That's the outcast motto. Maybe Cypress wouldn't know that because she probably would want to pause. And but then when uh, Kale and Tucker start walking down mm -hmm. with Kana just a step behind them, they're not going to point fingers. They're not going to be annoyed. They're just yeah. going to deal with the consequences and take care of what needs to be taken care of. So you said they're walking down. Yeah. I would like you to make a perception roll on t on a Kale. They walking like together in in marching order. Yeah. Okay. In that case, Kale, because he is front front there. Okay. Kale's got perception plus two. Twelve. Alright. You keep walking along, and you notice a faint glimmer of another tripwire moments before Kale steps right on top of it. Mm. A similar contraption falls down to the ground and shatters and makes noise. This time, the goblins don't make any noise. They're just picking up. They're just picking away, making their noise. The orc, however, shouts something different this time. This time, he says, "Stop!" What was that? Of course, it, as long as the, as it's the orc's idea, it's fine. So, what would you like to do now? Well, Kale, Kale's just going to curse and get a. Like a little bit of a divine buzz in the back of his head for mm -hmm. swearing, because Seraphina don't. Yeah, she doesn't. She don't. That. She don't rock that. That doesn't fly. Neither does Kale anymore. But that's beside the point. Um, but in response to that, they're uh, what they're going to have happen is that they're they actually have contingencies for getting getting caught with their uh, with their pants down in enemy territory. Okay. So Kana is actually going to. She's going to disappear into the shadows, and she's going to insist that Cypress join along with her, just trying to get into ambush positions. Okay. They're going to try and take the hide action. Tukra, and uh, Tukra is just going to make himself... Let me just make sure. And also, since Tukra's now level 4, he can turn into uh, creatures with uh, swimming speeds. Uh, is that level 4? Mm -hmm. I think it is. Uh, but yeah. He's going to... I'm going to have him turn into a poisonous snake. That's a nice, that's a nice one. And he's going to coil, well actually, yeah, poisonous snake. I, is that, that the constrictor snake? But I like the idea of the poisonous snake. Alright. It's not... Oh, it's a tiny little guy. Yeah, but that's, it, that's part of the hiding thing. Mm -hmm. Kale, however, is not going to hide. Kale is going to get ready, since he can see them as quickly as they can see him. Yeah. He's actually going to just stand there, stand there at the ready. He's going to look, He's going to start sneaking forward and... Uh, actually, he's going to backtrack a little bit and then okay. start moving down until he's... Uh, he's going to time it so that he can hear the boots coming and then he's going to start moving down so that he's just getting past the uh, the trip wires. Okay. And it looks like he's moving forward just very slowly and then he's going to be at the ready for when he hears the the boots coming. Right. But he's going to... You, could, up you might have him this. run... I might... Would you like me to roll a bluff check on him that he's looking around sort of panicked as if he can't see where he's going? Uh, not quite yet. So, 
this is, so tunnel entrance is back off this way, kind of up at the top here. These little colored in spots are, uh, those are stalagmites, mm -hmm. stalag stalactites, yeah. And they're coming down, coming up from the ground. These are actually also 10 foot squares this time. Okay. So this is a larger area. So like a uh, cypress and kana could both hide behind this stalactite there. Okay. Tucker's going to have coiled himself around behind the second stalactite. Okay. And the trip wires were on those two. Sorry, st yeah, stalag. Stalag is ground, stalac yeah. is, t yeah. is ceiling. Yeah. Stalagmite, yeah. So, uh, so t Kale would be coming from back here mm -hmm. if he wants to be passing the... Passing those. All right. So Cypress can see, I'm assuming it's dark vision 60 feet or something like that. Uh, dark vision is, give me one second. Might be, might be 30 feet. Dark vision gives you, sorry, give me a moment here. Take your time. We got time. All right. Dark vision, dark vision. Oh, it's going to be other direction. Uh, no, here we go. Uh, well, you gotta make sure, you gotta check the elf one, because it oh. might be different. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Alignment, so the dark vision, a custom twilight force, and nice. You can see in dim light within 60 feet of you as if you were, as if it were bright light, and in darkness as if it were dim light. Okay. So, it's, this is still, this is a kind of dim light back in this area, because the tunnel entrance isn't that far. Mm -hmm. By the time you get out into here, it's pretty much dark light, so you can kind of see over in this direction, but not very well. And up to about here, you can see as if it, as if it were normal light. Okay. In that area, you see these are going to be... He's so tiny and cute! So these are all going to be goblins. Not so tiny and cute. He put down a mummy, folks. And... Yeah, but it's a goblin. Even though they're zombies and mummies, they're goblins. Okay. And they're emaciated, slightly scrawny, All right. terrible goblins. Wait, there are other kinds of goblins? Oh yeah. There's lots of kinds of goblins. Huh. You might see some other kinds of goblins here. Alright. They are... So the goblins here are furiously wielding pickaxes, hacking at the wall to try and kind of dig it out, expand it, open up the tunnel area. You can see... It very abruptly starts to go out this way, so mm -hmm. it looks like since the got since the orcs have come in, they've been forcing them to expand. The orc is slowly walking up this way. He has a whip and a very large kind of mace on his belt, and he is shouting at the goblins, commanding them to work. But he's right now looking forwards, and he sees... He sees Kale walking, kind of, you say nonchalantly, down the path. He's when he sees him, he starts to get an idea in his, his head, and he's just going to come up and, say, okay, yeah, Kale's going to try and enrage this guy. Okay. And he's a, well, I have a, I have a very rude insult in nope, mind. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry, everyone. This insult has been considered far too rude for this broadcast, so instead you must listen to me butcher an English accent. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's go with a roll for intimidation. <laughs> See how that goes. Okay. Well, Kale's actually good. I like it. this. Uh, take advantage on it. Okay. I like that. Uh, let's see. On Intimidation, he gets plus three. He's actually got decent charisma. Yeah. So it's either 15 or 19. I'll take the 19. That's a 22. All right. Compared to a one, that will win. <laughs> yeah, this boy, this, uh, this orc boy is very angry now. Mm. Can yeah. we all, with that difference, I would almost like to see if that, w that could be equal to, uh, Dissonant Whispers, or what's, what's that bard spell? Uh, the psychic damage one. A like, vicious mockery. Vicious mockery. <laughs> oh, vicious, I love that. Vicious mockery is so much fun. Yeah, maybe Kale should actually get some. Uh, some he could. He could take the mage bar. initiate. I was he could thinking, just take a feat and get that one. True. Nah, I think. All right. 
He, I think he'd rather just go with a nice axe chopped to the head, mm -hmm. anyways. All right. Uh, so he's up here now. He's he's actually in the guy? in the cavern near yeah. the. Uh, also, Kana, Kana, and well, Tucker can't can't face palm. Yeah. Right now he doesn't have hands, but he would at that at that insult. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Kana yeah. is Kana is actually going to face palm. All right. So, uh, with that beautiful start to combat, let's roll initiative. All right. All right. Kale, it's at a minus one. But he rolled a 15. Huh. Not bad. And Tukra. Oh, wait. What is Tukra's dex as a, as a poisonous snake? Uh, that would be a 16. So a plus 3 for that. Nice. Tukra rolls. Oh, a 7 in total. Kana has plus 4 to her initiative. Okay. That's an 18 in total. And Cypress has a plus 4 as well. So she rolled a one. Woo. She's at a five. Slow start for the monk. All right. Good thing she has the speed. She has the movement speed to catch up. Oh, okay. So they're all that. All right. So we got orders. So Kana is up first. She is currently hidden. The uh, the orc has roared an orcish challenge and looks like he's about to charge. What would you like to do? Kana's actually going to sneak attack one of the goblins on the side. Okay, um, she could attack either one of those gabos. She'll attack the nearer gabo. Actually, she'll attack the gabo that's nearer to the orc. Okay. She's trying to make sure that there's no challenge. She knows how Kale likes to fight, so she's not she's not willing to let him get overwhelmed. All right. So she's actually going to try and take out the goblins that are nearest the orc, so he can have an even fight. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, so sneak attack. So that's rolling with advantage since she's hidden, and it's the start of combat. Yes. Um, she rolled a, let's see, so with her bow... Yeah, it's, it's not a surprise, ah, uh, so it's before... Yeah, let's say this is a, this is a surprise round for the, for the goblins. So that's nine plus six. So that'll be a crit if you hit. It's fifteen. That'll be a hit, so that's a crit for her first hit. Sweet. So that's a 1d6 plus four, plus another d6, right? Yep. Well, your sneak attack, which right. is probably 2d6 at this point. For level four, rogue. I think I don't think it upgraded just yet. Oh wait, I wrote it down. What, what am I doing? Sneak attack is two d six. Yeah. So you do forty six. Yep. And then another two d six for your bow. Jeez, a Pete's. That's a lot of d six. I don't feel good for this goblin. Let's see. That is four seven. That's ten damage from that plus two more die rolls. Oh, I did have another die. Mm -hmm. Three and one, that's 14 damage. So 14 damage plus, plus her dex. Plus dex, so that's a plus four. All right. So that's 18 damage. You absolutely obliterate this goblin. I'm thinking, arrow, yeah, give, give it a shot. Describe how it happens. I'm thinking Princess Mononoke, when Ashitaka is fleeing from the bandits and he takes... Thanks to his demon oh, arm. Oh, yeah, his, like, super, yeah. his, like, super. undulating, gross super arm. Yeah, and splinter, it... Splintered, like, almost yeah. splinters the bow and the arrow as it hits. Yeah, but it causes it so that just that one arrow actually takes off a bandit's head with one shot, like, completely decapitates him. Yeah, you... The arrow, like, comes in and it hits the neck, and so much of the neck is gone that the, go, that the goblin's head just collapses off and sinews tear and falls off. Lovely. He goes down to the ground, his pickaxe falls to the floor... The uh, orc barely even registers that one of his goblins has died and just charges straight at, straight at Kale. Uh, he takes out, his, takes out his mace and he wails upon Kale, Hash. swinging first. Oh, the rhyme. First downwards, then across to try and like bat his head right off. So that would be a 22 and a 19. How do those do? On class 18. All right, both so hit. those are both hits. That will be 16 damage to, t to Kale. You get your shield up, and it crushes the first bow against you, leaving your, leaving your arm numb and tired. The second blow catches you across the face, spinning you, stunning you slightly. All right, Kale's down to 23. And now the orc cries out another 
shout in shout in Orcish. It sounds like get him. Here we go. And this the, guy's out, right? Yeah. And these this goblin here is close enough and he makes a rushed attack at you at the orc's command. His pickaxe swings around, but he kind of turned himself too quickly, he crosses his feet, falls down, and completely, completely misses Kale as he tries to strike him. He is now laying, this, that goblin now is laying prone on the ground. Mm. And it is Kale's turn. All right, Kale's going, well, Kale's now wanting to go mano a mano with the, with the orc. Mm-hmm. So he is going to, yeah, he's going to attack the orc with his good old trusty axe. Okay. And his hobnail boots, he goes where the timber's tall. <laughs> Anyways, my horrible reference aside, he's going to attack. Uh, battle axe at a plus seven. All right. Oh, so close to a crit. That oh, would wait, be no. a hit. Yeah. Not but, quite yet. Yeah. Soon that's almost yeah. a crit. Fourteen. Uh, 14, in, or no, 24 in yeah, total. That'll be a hit, for sure. All right, so that's a 1d8 plus 5. Thank you, 20 strength. Oh, yeah, all, all the characters have leveled up, guys, so uh, they all got their stats boosted. Everyone's a little bit tougher now. Let's see, 1d8 plus 5. That's 6 damage that's plus 5. Solid. That's 11 damage. All right. Liking it, Kale. Liking it a lot. Uh, and as I think, yeah, that's that's fine. Anything else? He might actually... No, no, he can't... That's a that's a spell. It can't be a minor action. Hmm? Light. I thought maybe he would put, cast light on his shield. Nah. But no, so he... That's yeah. a beautiful, celestial kind of looking thing. Yeah. No, Kale's done at that point. All right, so now our turn order moves down to our goblins. The uh, first goblin here, the one that took a swing at Kale kind of stands up, brushes itself off, and warily, sa- warily stands back, kind of shivering and scared, holding its pickaxe out in front of him as if it were a shield. Uh-huh. The uh, other two goblins turn around to look at what's happening. They look at, the, they look at their orc that's leading them. They look at Kale. They look back at the orc. And then look at Kale. <laughs> and then decide that Kale is less scary than the orc. And Well, considering that right now Kale's probably bleeding a bit more than the orc after their first They kind of try to shove each other in close to get close to where Kale is, but only one can actually get close enough to take a swing at him as the orc is ordering. I should have done an intimidation check. That should have been my next action. Definitely... Uh, they're kind of struggle, they're kind of pushing each other back and forth, along with just how physically small and honestly pretty abused looking these goblins are. Mm-hmm. They cannot land, neither of them can land an actual blow against you. Like the at the pickaxe even comes down and Kale doesn't even, Kale looks at it and is like, oh, I thought that was a feint. Mm. That was the attack? <laughs> no, no, let me teach... Come back later. Let, I'll teach you how to do Let me show you how this is done. Flack. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, that is, that is the goblin's turn. Uh, so they're both kind of, they're both within five foot range of Kale at the moment. And this goblin has stood up and is now t- taking the dodge action. Mm-hmm. It's trying to keep itself safe. It is now Tukra's turn as the tiny little adorable poisonous snake. Poisonous snake is actually it was it slithers around the slight the sl- stalagmite mm-hmm. and strikes at the goblin that just got back up. The one that just stood up. Yeah. All right. So make an attack at disadvantage. Disadvantage. Yeah. He, the one that just stood up took the dodge action. Oh, sorry. Um, God, that's how that works. Uh, yeah. I'll st- I I made my call, and it's my mistake for not remembering what dodge does. Yeah. Disadvantage. Uh, but at a plus five to hit on bite. That's his only action. Yes. That's either an eight or a nineteen. Well, I'll have well, to take the eight. Unfortunately, that's a thirteen. That's a thirteen, which hits. Oh, 
So that's one piercing damage, and the goblin has to make a DC saving throw. Ten saving throw. All right. You're not in for a good time, little goblin buddy. I'm sorry. Okay. You survive. You handle you handle the poison. You don't get hurt that bad. Good for you, goblin. He uh. He cries out in surprise and fear as he feels the kind of fangs sink into his ankle Mm -hmm. and immediately like starts hopping around leans over to try and suck at the wound pulls off tries to pull off Takra if he can Mm. and he gets well the 2d4 damage just gets halved right yeah let me roll that up I should actually see if he survives before I do that I thought that was saved for none alright never mind oh he died oh I almost feel bad (laughs) almost all right, so, so Tucker's he, up he here. He starts doing all that, and he then flails. starts to shiver and shake, and falls down. The poisonous snake is a lot more effective than I thought it would be. Oof. Yeah, that's a that's a solid amount of damage. Yeah. So now Tucker, as the tiny little snake, is standing is a uh, coil up. Would you like to do anything else? He's going to move around, and uh, he's going I to remember move these around. are ten foot squares. Yeah, and you only have thirty feet. Yeah, so he's already made. He's made a, a ten, ten foot. foot. Uh, is the orc aware orc of his is, presence? Uh, right in front of Kale. But if I try to move, past, but it's ten feet, so it's not exactly like the rules of area. Or you've got you've got room. Yeah, you're okay. fine. So Tucker's actually going to be moving around to cut off escape. That's okay. his plan. That's his normal thing. All right. So now we yes. go on to Cyprus. All right, Cyprus is going. She's taken the hint, or she was she was cued in a little bit on this, just. Let Kale take care of the big guys. We take and we'll just take flush yeah. out any. She's any noticed s- the flankers. pattern now. Yeah, so she's going to move and she's going to try and take on the the first goblin with a spear thrust. Okay. Uh, just because I forgot to mention, Cypress uses a spear along with her martial arts. Okay. So she's going to use her spear attack with one handed. Actually, she okay. well, normally she uses a spear with one hand and then follows up with this with a uh, open handed martial arts strike. That's how uh, she does it. Just so you know. When you're attacking with a two-handed weapon, you only have to have it in two hands when you're attacking. So you can attack with a two-handed and then do follow up with your. But a spear can one be hand. one-handed or two-handed. No, I'm just saying you can attack with two hands and then still do the unarmed strike as well. Oh, cool. Okay, then I will do that. Because is it stronger with the two-handed? Yes. Okay, I then believe I will... it's a one d eight rather than a one d six. Yes. Then I will do that. All right. Thank you. Go right ahead. Okay. So let's see. Spear at a plus five. I have that right. Should be a plus six. Whoops. I, dang it, I thought I had her fully updated. Okay. Good now. Uh, so yeah, Cypress attacks at a, 1D, at a plus six. That's a 15. All right, that will be a hit on the goblin. Okay, so let's see, that's 1d8 since she was using both hands. 1d8 mm-hmm. plus four. That's eight damage in total. All right. Your spear kind of goes forward, and the goblin tries to fall, tries to just fall back out of the way, but you catch him right on the chin, right up through it. He's back up against the wall, and then slows off your spear. And he is gone. What would you like to do? Well, just painting the picture for everybody, as... As she lands that spear and, and sticks him into the wall, she's going to. Uh, Cypress is going to spin around and with an elbow, she's going to try and bash the other goblin's nose right into right into his skull and kill him with that one with that one blow. All right, go for it. So that's a martial arts attack at a plus six. I believe that's a one d four, correct? Martial uh, arts. Martial arts at level four. What's that gonna be? I don't think it gets to a plus uh, to a d one d six until your level. Level five. Yep, you're right. Okay. So one d four, but I also th- since, thanks to martial arts, I get to add my de- my uh, attack damage bonus, right? Yes. That is two damage plus four, so that's six damage. Six damage, and that elbow strike is enough to remove that goblin from the equation. Wow. So his yeah. uh, nose gets cracked and shoved back, and his head caroms against the wall and. He's out for the count. 
You ever seen that movie, uh, The Best Can or the uh, The Last Boy Scout with Bruce Willis? Uh no, I don't think so. It was a little bit. It was after the Die Hard's one and two came out because apparently there are a whole bunch mm-hmm. of references to it. But I saw the end of it, and there's this scene where he gets kidnapped by the this uh, this group of mobsters, and one of the mobsters pisses him off, so he says, "If you if you touch me one more time, I'm going to kill you." And you know they're thinking that he's he's got guns trained on him, he's not going to do it. Guy guy smacks him. He gives him a a palm heel thrust to the nose and kills him in that one blow. Ouch. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's that was my inspiration for that. All right. I and like goblins, that. I'm pretty sure, have bigger noses than humans, so mm-hmm. bigger target. Big schnoz. Yeah. But yeah, so she's got movement to spare. So Cypress is going to try and just work her way around and, and help block off the exit. Mm. All right. So now Kale gets his death match with the orc, and I'm not sure if the orc yeah. wants the death match, but he's kind of stuck with it now. All right, well, it is now back up to the top of the order, and that means that it is Kana's turn. All right, She Con- is no longer hidden, but she is uh, able to hide. She'll try and take the hide action. She's going to move up and try and hide behind the other stalagmite. Okay, so go ahead and make a stealth roll. That's a four plus six, so a ten. All right, Kana believes she is hidden. <laughs> Yeah, at this point, she's just trying to make sure that she's not getting in Kale's way. Okay. All right. No attack or anything? I thought that was her main action was to try and hide. No, you're a rogue. You can do that as a bonus well, action. You're right. Oh, yeah. It's been a little too long. Yeah, she's she's going to take a, an arrow. Uh, like, actually, no. You know what? She respects Kale's rules of, of honorable combat. She's letting him do yeah. his thing? She's just, like, yeah, she's just letting him stay, or she's trying to stay out of the way. If, All right. If the guy tries to mess with her or Tukra or... Or in this, or now Cyprus, all bets are off. But for now, it's between the orc and Kale. Okay. Or if Kale's about to die, in which case they will yeah. try to, they will, they'll, they'll kill. They'll the, step they'll in if the something orc. happens. Yeah. All right. So I, I assume she has like a an arrow trained on him, ready to let loose if mm-hmm. if it starts going south. Yeah. All right. So the orc, it ha- it hasn't cooled off yet. It's definitely not running away. It's still enraged, but it has seen that it's. Associate, it's all its goblins have gone down, and it knows nothing good is happening. Uh, it wants to take someone down with him. He takes his takes his uh, mace. He takes one big swing at Kale to try and almost shove him out of the way, get some room on him. All right. And then it takes his takes his left hand and flicks the whip around. Past Kale to try and swipe Kana right in the face. All right. Let's see. Uh, so first Kale strikes Kana. at Kale. All right. That is a 15 against Kale, which is not good enough. But that is a 20 unnatural against Kana, which I believe is good enough. Well, considering her her DC is or her her AC is 14, I think you're right. All right. Wait, maybe that should, that should be a 15 now, shouldn't it, since your decks went up. Mm-hmm. And that is a total of six damage. The whip also, flicks, flicks out and just the tip. How much damage? Uh, six damage. Slices against her cheek. Down to 25. Kana's going to let out a cry of surprise and pain mm-hmm. upon getting whipped in the face. And if he's able to see it, that... I'm guessing the orc still got eyes trained on Kale because he recognizes the immediate threat. Mm-hmm. And because all you can see is black and white and grays in uh, in with dark vision, he's just yeah. going to see Kale's eyes go black. <laughs> all right, so that is that is our orc's action. He is angry, trying to hurt everything and anything around him. Now we move on to Gobbles are all gone, so it is Tukra now. Or actually, it's Kale now, sorry. Well, Kale is now royally pissed. Mm-hmm. He's going to look at the orc for a second. He actually, he turned, he glanced back quickly when he heard Kana cry, sees her bleeding, and he turns back. How dare you? I'm going to rip your throat out. Oh, my. And he's going to raise his battle axe and go in, and just go in screaming. All right. Make that attack. That is a... Where are you, Kale? That should be a 17. 17. All right, that is good enough to hit. All right. Roll me that damage. 
And let's see, so that's a 1d8, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a 7. Alright, 7 damage. Alright, he's looking worse for the wear, but he still has energy to spare. Tukra is up. Uh, Tukra's going to revert back to his regular form, so okay. that, but he's still he's still not going to do anything. Okay, so he's he's just becoming large again. Yeah, he's ready. He's on standby as healer now. Okay, so that is now. So now we go to Cyprus. Well, Cyprus also Cyprus is looking over at Tukra, wondering should we do something. Mm -hmm. And she can see that all of the muscles in Tucker, all the tendons in Tucker's neck are tensed. He's as angry. No, well, Kale's. Kale's angry. the angriest yeah. right now. But Kale, but Tucker just saw his adopted daughter get struck in yeah. the face with a whip. He is not happy. He's now in full-on parent mode, ready to go. Well, he's ready to to shillelagh shillel this guy over the head if Kale can't finish the job. Okay. So is Cypress doing anything, or is she standing still? Cyprus is going to turn around and keep, and uh, while she's present, she's aware of the fight. She's keeping an eye out for any people. She's going to okay, be so running perception getting, on the on the further catacombs. She's looking around to see the next area. Yeah, All she right. doesn't want to get have them caught and blindsided by an enemy force. She is able to see there are four paths and a more kind of craggy, opened up area mm -hmm. beyond. There's two paths off to the west and two paths off to the east. Two of those, one of the paths on each side goes to the south. And they all look like they're kind of long, longer tunnels that go off for a while. There are no other enemies in the area. And passive is 15 or something like that if I remember. And there don't seem to be any, there's no traps or anything that you can notice. Mm. All right, so back up to the top with Kana. What is she going to do? She's been whipped in the face now. She's going to try and shift over and hide because she recognizes that she's been had. Mm -hmm. But she's she's just nursing her wound, trying to just... She's just touching at it, just trying to get it to... Just trying to wipe away the blood. Okay, so she's going to try and hide again? Yeah. All right, so roll me that stealth. Oh, that's better. All right. 18 plus 6. She kind of manages to tuck and roll and dive in a weird, deceptive sort of manner. Mm -hmm. She's absolutely certain no one knows where she is right now. Right. She could be behind any of the three stalag stalagmites that are on the ground in that area. Not even Kale knows. Mm. All right. So with that, the uh, how smart is this guy? All right. That's about as smart as I thought. With the target he was about to switch to gone, the orc now retrains all his eye, all his fervor on the on a kale. He takes his mace and swings it twice again at kale, trying to crush him down into a pulp. All right. Even though kale is now kale screaming right back in Continuing to be yeah. frightening and terrifying to him. Well, he's he's screaming he's right back in his screaming. face as he uh, as he's beating him down with the mace. He's just come on, come on. Exactly that kind yeah. of thing. All right, our first strike gets bashed uselessly off against the wall, but he manages to bring the base around the mace around to bear and crushes one strongly into Kale. All right, dealing seven more points of damage. Ah, they're only in the first chamber already. Kale's been taking his. Licks. This is what Kale does. He goes, True. he doesn't go first, and he gets hurt. True. Why is this always happening with my fighter characters? Have you noticed this? Yeah. Between. Him I mean, it's not as bad as Draskan, who always goes last. But yeah. For all of you who don't know, Draskan Vestital is a dragonborn uh, eldritch knight that I created for an, another car campaign we have with the rest of the game works, and he gets hit a lot. He gets beaten up a lot. Yeah. We made it through a whole gladiatorial thing. He did not go first a single time. Mm -mm. It was great. Yeah. No, he did go first once, but he held action. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It was the last fight, and you were like, I can't break the streak. I gotta go last again. Yeah. All right. All right. So, Kale's up? Uh, yes, Kale is up. All right. Uh, so, I'm going to have... Kale's just... He's in full-on battle rage right now. He's ready. Okay. He is... He's actually planning... Oh, well, I'll save that. But he's going to just go with the battle axe again. Okay. And he rolled another 10, so that's 17. All right, that will hit again. 
Alright, so damage. Seriously, that, that upgraded that upgraded critical is not doing me any favors right now. Ten eh. percent chance is <laughs> six damage. I mean that, that's still six damage. That's a lot of damage. That plus five that now, plus five modifier is helpful. I think if anyone else had attacked at this point, it would have the orc would have been dead, but <laughs> Hey, flavor. Yeah. Yeah, flavor. Gotta roleplay it. Yeah. Alright, so now it is down to. Uh, Tukra is next. Will he continue to hold off? He's getting bored. He's starting to think, oh, come on, Kale, finish this already. But he's gonna stand fast because he knows Kale prefers it that way. Mm hmm. And he's. Right. And it's not. He doesn't think that Kale's gonna lose either. Just yeah. let, let him get vent because otherwise Kale's gonna be grumpy the rest of the, of the dungeon. You, you wouldn't want your fighter grumpy throughout the dungeon. Yeah. All right. Uh, on to Cyprus, I suppose. Is Thing she is gonna... that, no, Cyprus actually is, is fed up, and she's thinking this is not going how we want it yeah. to. So she's going to actually strike at the orc, move All in, right. and 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 do a spear strike to his. Uh, he's she's actually going to try and flank if she okay. can. Get combat advantage on that spear strike. Uh we aren't really playing with flanking. But... Fair enough. Okay, then never mind. I'll attack with a spear strike at a plus six, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is. She rolls down your crit. The Come on. <laughs> so twenty-five. Right. That'll be a hit, though. So that's a one d eight plus four. That is a solid eight damage. All right. Would you like to take your bonus on arm strike? Uh, yeah. She's going to follow up. Uh, she struck. She was trying to get him in the knee. Sort of think like uh, the fight between Jeremy Lannister and Eddard Stark, and that one, okay. and that one soldier intervene, uh, intervenes. Mm -hmm. So she she was going for that, but she's going to follow up with a nice little spin back hook kick into his head. Okay. Or actually, I guess that's still an unarmed, unarmed strike, but it's flavorful. Yeah. It's not like it does any extra damage for being a leg mm -hmm. versus an arm. Yeah, an unarmed strike is just it's not with a weapon. That's right. all it is. So that's one d four. If you plus... wanted to, every unarmed strike could be a bite. <laughs> True. 1d4 plus uh, 4. That is max damage, 8 damage. Alright. With a gurgle of rage, the orc collapses down onto his knees. The strike to his knee brings him down to one knee. Then your foot kind of, you spin about elegantly. Foot comes in and axes right down into the mm -hmm. hinge, right behind the jaw. Yeah. Takes him down. He's flat out on the ground with a heavy thud. Is he dead? He is dead. Well, could I do something a little bit flavorful? This is going to sort of paint a picture of Kale when he's really mad. Okay. As he's falling, Kale's actually going to reach down and actually grab him by the throat. Mm hmm And there's going to be just this little crackle of necrotic energy around his fingertips. Okay. And he's actually going to be true to his word, and he's actually going to rip the orc's throat out. Oh. Before finishing, pulling off, finishing off the decapitation with his axe. All right. Cypress is going to look at him aghast. Yeah. That was a she, she gruesome felt, act there. She felt his, she felt the orc was dead before he even hit the ground. Yeah. She knew. She yeah. knows anatomy from her time in the monastery. Yeah. And Tukra kind of saw it dimly. And she, knows that, she knows that Kale gets this way sometimes. Mm -hmm. It scares her, but she's used to it. She knows he'll calm down and he wouldn't do it to them. Tukra, on the other hand, is not... He's concerned. Yeah. He, um, he he hasn't been with... He met a... Or no, no, no. How, no, yeah. He's known... Actually, no. But even was, though he and he and Kana have known Kale... Oh, no, no. Yeah. Kale and Kana have been together a bit longer than he has been with them. Mm -hmm. So he hasn't seen it as often because back before they met Tucker, they were fighting a lot more. Yeah. And I mean... But Tucker's as, seen... As you said, there's like some... There's some of his sort of necrotic evil kind of energy going along with it that's yeah. clearly unnatural and not not good it's not even a matter of it being out of the natural balance for Tukra. it's also that he's watching his adoptive son turn into something that nobody there wants him to become mm -hmm. not and seraphina i'm sure is just scree trying to scream for him to calm down yeah. the entire time there's like just lullabies and stuff going into his ear quiet yeah. gentle noises that kind of thing so as kale's panting, kind of comes up and just lowers it, like, puts one hand on his shoulder and one on his axe hand, just bringing it slowly mm -hmm. down, trying to get him to calm down. 
And Kale is just going to start whispering, I'm sorry, to her and to Tucker. Just to, and also to Cypress, he just didn't want anybody to see that. Especially since Cypress doesn't know anything about his Asmar heritage. Yeah. So he kind of just gave away a big tell. <laughs> um, Tucker is just going to come up and he's going to do healing touch on Kale. He's okay. not going to worry too much about Connor. It's a scratch to the face. Yes. She'll be all right. She's had, she's had worst, worst scratches before in her yeah. life. Uh, let's see here. Make sure I have that right. Should be uh, 1d8 plus wisdom, I think, for healing touch. I've got... Oh, sorry. It's cure wounds, not healing oh, cure touch. Wounds. What was it you said? 1d8 plus wisdom modifier, I That's think. That's correct. So 1d8 plus 4. I remember... Yeah, I do remember that distinctly. Because the healing word is, uh, is 1d6 plus... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that one's got the benefit of being a bonus yeah. action and ranged. Yep. Right, six so plus four, so ten. Ten total. Up to twenty six. Lovely. Yeah, I forgot. Kale also has his action surge, so take a short rest, and they, he could get that back. But still. Yeah. All right. All right. Tuck was down by one. One slot. How many does he have? Four slots, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, should have four one and three. Seven, yeah, I did I update that properly. Yeah, we're all good. Okay, so that we also was... got an extra can uh, an extra cantrip. Ooh, nice. Yeah, which pick? Guidance. Oh, I love guidance. Thought that'd be a good one for him to have. Yeah. So, uh, so that was our that was the entryway. Kind of these goblins were under work command, remodeling this sort of area, opening it up. It could have become almost anything. It looks like this would be a natural defense point at this point. Um, right. But onwards, uh, Cyprus has been was looking and saw that there are these four different paths, and there are also with her special eyes, she sees painted on the walls. There are different symbols next to each of the paths. Uh, this path has kind of a crown on it, a weird, a sort of raggedy, goblin-esque crown. This path has uh, a big pile. It looks, when uh, Cypress describes it to the others, it to the to Tukra and Kana because they don't have dark vision. It kind of looks like that those weird sort of nests that the wargs were in at the goblin ha at the goblin house. Mm -hmm. This one has mushrooms on it, and this one has a, uh, a weird puddle, like a sort of blob-looking th looking picture. Picture? Yeah, these are all, like, pictures drawn next to the, next to the caverns, oh. next to the tunnels. So, I guess one's the farm and the other one... Spawning pits? Bathhouse? You've, you've got blobby thing, mushrooms, uh, nest, nest, and crown. All right, let's check out the blobby thing first. Blobby thing, all right. So Cypress is going to take the lead on this. Kale's going to be falling behind her. And it's going to be Kana than Tukra. All righty. Actually, you know what? Let's have Kale in the back, because at least that way they have somebody with dark vision on either end. Mm-hmm. Definitely good, good idea. Uh, so you enter in, and there is there are plenty of stalactites, stalagmites. Uh, this sort of wiggly area is all full of water. Actually, there are big boulders kind of placed in the water, seemingly randomly. Um, and there's a big kind of dark splotch within the water here that Cypress can make out that seems to go a lot deeper than the other water. Uh, I would like you also to make a perception check with Cypress there. Okay. She is in the front line. Cypress is at plus... Perception, I keep on forgetting she's at a plus five. Oh, it was almost a 20. <laughs> 15. All right. Uh, you notice that these boulders have an odd texture to the top of them that the others do not. It looks almost like people have been jumping on top of them. Hmm. Cypress, with her wood elf agility, is going to test this. 
And, you know, Kana is going to, they're all going to follow quickly behind because they don't want to leave her, you know, mm-hmm. leave her without yeah. any support. They don't want to leave her in the lurch. While, while they're doing that, Kel's actually going to keep on watching down the tunnel, making sure nobody sneaks up behind them. Okay. Has she moved out into the water yet? She's trying to hop onto the stones, actually. Okay. Uh, she doesn't so want to get in the water unless she really has to. As she is moving... Oops. Poor to the Tucker. shore right here. Mm-hmm. A arm stretches... A kind of black, inky arm stretches out from the stalactite. Wraps itself around her foot. She is currently grappled and takes... Three acid damage. Yeah. In response to that, she's going to swear in Elvish. Okay. She's going to, uh, I guess, something like, "It is crap." I made that sound like it's Vulcan. I was going to say that. That's very Germanic sounding. That's got like a lot of, a lot of anger behind it. Well, yeah, she just got hit with acid damage. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. Uh, how much was it again? That was three damage. All right, twenty-two. All right, so you are now facing a black pudding coming off of that little guy there. All right, so that would be our little surprise round. Mm-hmm. Now we shall ro- we shall roll initiative. Okay. Well, uh, so start. Cypress at a plus four has fifteen. Kale at a minus one has two. Kana at a plus four has seventeen. Alright. And Tukra at a zero has a 14. So Kana, with her lightning reflexes, is able to respond to this strange threat coming off of the stalactite or stalagmite faster than anyone else. She is able to go first. What would Kana like to do? She hears the strange, strange curse in Elvish that she doesn't recognize. She sees her new companion being grasped by this black, oily substance reaching out from the stalagmite. She's going to try and attack it with her cold her uh, cold steel dagger. Okay. So she's cold gonna dagger. move in and take a swipe at it? Yeah. Okay, that's... go ahead. Nat 20. Woo, that's a crit. Woo! All right. Now I you cannot... get a sneak attack on that because a non-incapacitated ally is there. Right. And it, it's the... Oh, technically it did da- do damage to her, so it's not yeah. an assassination. So that's sneak attack to... So that's 66, right? Yep. Uh, 46 and 2d4. You're right, 46, 2d4, sorry. But it also gets a boost to damage because it's a plus one. Well, that's only if it's against Fey. No, 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 the cold damage. Oh, yeah, it does get the one extra yeah. damage. So that's 9, 11... 15, 17, 18, 19 damage in total. And then her dexterity. Oh, right. So plus dex, that comes out to uh, plus 4, so that's 23 damage. I'm guessing it has reduction, though. Man, it's fun to play a rogue. (laughs) All right. You kind of come in, your dagger sort of jabs right into that inky appendage coming out, and it just immediately drops off like a chameleon's tail being cut off. Mm. It wriggles around, kind of splashes, tries to coil itself around the dagger after the strike, but doesn't manage to. While that's going, the, uh, yeah. Cypress is just going to be shaking, trying to shake it off of her leg, what, what's stuck to her leg. Mm-hmm. It's going, nee, 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 nee. <laughs> like, because that's my idea of what elves say when they're trying to say, ew, 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 ew. Alrighty. And uh, the, the main body sort of slowly drips off of this thing. It's very difficult to see. It's pitch blackness in near bla- in near perfect darkness. Now, the ooze, or the uh, black pudding gets to go. And the pudding feels the ground around it and, sent- and sees all these different people around it. Who would be wearing more metal stuff? Kana or Cypress? Like have more Cypress metal doesn't on have any. Well, the leather armor still has like leather buckle or has yeah, buckles metal buckles. And things. And, whereas Cypress is just wearing travelers. Ar- I, I think of a monk's clothes in this universe as being like what Ray wore in uh, in Episode Seven. Okay. Uh, in that case, it will continue to go after, or actually, it will start to go after Kana with her metal things. 
as it is the closest source of metal. It uh, reaches out, bundles up a bunch of these smaller appendages, like the ones that it grabbed onto, onto Cyprus, into a big sort of bulbous pod, and swings that down and forwards, trying to, almost like it's trying to capture her in its face, in, in, within its sort of belly and body. I also forgot to say that uh, with the uh, during the last combat, I want to make it clear that with uh, her Glimmer Fade vest, Kana chose to go with uh, thick hide again. Okay. Her, she's kind of she likes having a little extra armor on her, even though it's leather armor. So yeah, I mean any any bit helps. So she's got her plus one armor. All right, that is gonna be a hit with a twenty four. Oh boy. What and also that that new vest that she got. We don't have a card for it yet, but that's the oh, one yes, that allows the... her to jump higher. Yes, the cat's eye cat's eye vest. Right. Let's her add her dexterity modifier to any jump she makes. Got it. All right. So that is a total of eighteen damage. That is nine bludgeoning and nine acid damage. Yikes! Yeah, this thing hurts. It's down to six. She has no non-natural armor, so lucky her. Hmm. The uh, ooze is clearly... But what about magical clothing? Technically that cat's eye vest is, ma- is magical. And yes, the she vest. has all magical stuff, so that's good. Oh! She'd be in trouble if non-magical things were on her. Uh-oh. Uh, so, uh, the ooze kind of... It reaches, it smashes down on her and that big appendage kind of bursts into acidy stuff on top of her after it hits mm. and it sort of clings to the clasps on the vest and onto her dagger but nothing happens okay. and it sort of starts to slow down and fall off and regroup into the main body and the main body begins to inch its way away from her off towards this tasty metal morsel over here. That is Kale. All okay. right. And now it is Tucker's turn. Tucker's going to attack with Frostbite. Okay. Yeah, that seems like a wise way to go. Well, actually, strike that, reverse it. He's going to cast Flaming Sphere. Okay. That was one of the new spheres, spells yeah. that he got. All right, now refresh me on what Flaming Sphere does. I believe it creates a five-foot Flaming Sphere. Yes, which deal... It, he can maintain which, it deals damage to things near it at the beginning of their beginning and end of their turn, maybe? Flaming Sphere, yes. Uh, five foot diameter sphere of fi- uh, fire appears in an unoccupied space of your choice within range and lasts for the duration. Duration being uh, up to one minute, so five rounds. Okay. Well, ten rounds. Oh, pff, you're right. <laughs> I was thinking 30 seconds. Hey, sorry. Or, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> ten rounds. Uh, any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the sphere must make a dexterity saving throw. The creature takes 2d6 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much bonus on a successful one. Okay. As a bonus action, you can move the sphere up to 30 feet. If you ram the sphere into a creature, that uh, that creature must make the saving throw against the sphere's damage, and the sphere stops moving this turn. Okay. Uh, when Let's you move see. the sphere, you can direct it over barriers up to five feet tall and jump it across pits up to ten feet wide. The sphere ignites flammable objects not being worn or carried, and it sheds bright light in a 20-foot radius and dim light for an additional 20 feet. And at higher levels, uh, when you cast a spell using a, third, a spell slot of third level or higher... Probably it increases damages, by 1d6. 1D, yeah, it increases yep. by 1d6 for each slot. All right. You know this rulebook too well. I, feel, uh, I, know the I need gen- to study this. I know the general styles of stuff like that. So Tucker's going to cast Flaming Sphere here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yet... You can, because these are 10 foot squares, right. you can orient, put it in a spot where it's not going to hit any of your allies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because how far are we? How far are uh, it's five, five, feet, feet. five feet away. Okay. So, like, it right now she's here. She's like 20 feet away or so from where the ooze is. Mm-hmm. Kana is o- over here. She's about 10 feet away from the ooze. So, you could put it in this spot, in this area here, and then ram it in. Yeah, that's the idea, was to ram it in. And it would be far enough away that no one no one will be hurt except yeah. for the ooze. Okay, so that, yeah, let's go with that. Alright, so that is a dex save. Tukra, it's a plus four. So that means he's got 14 save DC. 
Wait, Tucker's a what? I thought he had a plus. I thought he had a plus four, right? Oh yeah, to wiz. Yeah, sorry, spell yeah. save DC. I thought you were talking about dex save. I'm thinking Tucker no, has no. no dex. He's not dexterous. All right, so roll that damage for me. Two d six, right? Yep. Plus his spell damage? Nope. Just the 2d6. Mm-hmm. Spell damage is very different. I'm also not used to him actually dealing spell damage. So that's seven, right. dam- 7 fire damage. That is 23. Alright, the fire, the flaming orb kind of rushes forwards, sort of conjures up, rushes forwards, and crashes into the side of this sort of bulbous, bubbling, inky, inky pile. It hisses, the orb kind of hisses and sputters where where it hits the thing and then rises back up, reignites. You can smell this acrid, black, acrid, disgusting odor in the air from where it was burned. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did not particularly like that. Hmm. Uh, who is up next? Next is Cypress. I thought Cypress, oh, I guess, yeah, Cypress did get beat by Tapra. Alright, Cypress doesn't have much to deal with. She's kind of freaking out about this thing, so she's just going to keep her distance and just spear jab. Okay. Like, go in there, poke it, get out of there. Yeah. Because okay. she's not used to dealing with stuff that's amorphous. Usually there's bones to break and uh, skin to skin to tear, stuff mm-hmm. to dislocate. Okay. Also, it, it grabbed her and did acid damage, so it's, yeah. she's feeling kind of grossed out. She might be 80 years old, but she's still young by elven standards. Yeah. She's not even like six. She's like sixteen by human standards, I think. Yeah. Uh, she rolled a fit an eleven in total. An eleven. Mm-hmm. All right, that will be a hit. Sit. Oh. It's okay. A puddle. Good point. It's not that hard to hit puddles. Yeah. It's a puddle. It's not that <laughs> difficult. So that's one uh, d. Oh, sorry, one d eight. She's not willing to punch this thing either. Putting her body into goo, acidic goo, at that matter, not really her cup of tea. That's 7 damage plus her 4 dex modifier, so that's 11 in total. Alright. So now, as your uh, spear plunges in and hits sort of the... It's also, I guess it's, it's best to mention it's not a magical spear, so yes. the metal... So the uh, metal and wood of your spear is weakened and corroded as it, sli- as it hits the blob and hurts it. You know, have a minus 1 on that spear. Alright. So, uh, yeah, that spear is going to have a minus one until you get it repaired. Hmm. And that is, uh... Oh, that's only to damage, actually, so that's not so bad. Still deals its normal damage. But... To hit has minus? Just to damage has oh. minus, not the to hit. Oh, okay. There we go. So that is that much. All right, is she going to go in with her fist and... No, she's not. She's not. Okay. She's backing off now. All right. She's, she's backing off. This, this is a bit of a mismatch for her. Okay. Now we go down to the slow man who's going to kind of turn around and see this whole scene happening. It's Kale's turn. Uh, Kale's not sure what to do here because, I mean, he has been watching kind of. I mean, I would assume he's tur- he yeah. turned around at the hubbub. And he just saw what happened to... Yeah, he saw yeah. the acid kind of eat away at the spear. Yeah, and knowing that he, uh, unlike his comrades, he has no magical weapons or armor. He knows that he's in a bad position, so he's just going to... He's going to look for rocks to throw at the thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, there are rocks on the ground. Okay, so he's going to pick up a rock and try and throw it at it. You can use that as a... Uh... 1d4 plus strength. Okay. Projectile? Yep. And uh, add strength to the, to the attack roll. Got it. So that's a plus set, uh, plus 5. No proficiency, right? It doesn't really have proficiency yeah. with throwing rocks. Wait, that's not the right... What am I doing? It's not time for damage yet. <laughs> 6? Yeah, 6 All plus right. 5. So that 11. is enough. That will be a hit. Alright. So give me that damage this time. Kale feels very childish because he's just throwing rocks like a child. <laughs> But hey, it's better than losing the axe. If it works, it works. So four plus five, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's nine. Da- okay, that's actually even with the rock, it's he's more still- damage than he did with his axe. Yeah, even with the rock, he's still oh. doing doing decent damage. All right. So our our sat our pudding is 
being torched and struck with rocks and stabbed in the back. It is definitely not having a good time. It's like a medieval mob. <laughs> it's also Kana's turn. Kana's going to, she's going to come in again with the, uh, with the knife because she, now she knows that it's not going to be corroded. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't want this thing getting a kill. Okay. Go right ahead and make that attack. Also, not many places to hide from this thing. Yeah. That is a crit fail. That is a jacked up die, so roll that again, actually. Okay. That's a 14 plus 4. All right. So that's an 18. That'll be a hit. Okay, so that's a 1d4. And uh, you get sneak attack, so that's another 2d6. She's not really near anybody, though. Yeah, but all these other people are around the monster that she's attached to. Okay, right. Yeah. She doesn't. She's not the one that has to be within five feet of an ally. Right. The thing she's hitting has to be within five feet. Okay, got it. Sorry, I got that mixed up with Kale's protection. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 2d6 plus the 1d4 plus another one damage from cold. That is 4, 8... Uh, 13, 13 plus, and plus 1 is 14, that's 18. 18. Alright. Man. Kana does well when she's with a team. It was very different when she was flying solo trying to take down that satyr. I mean, she needs someone to be around to help it out. Yeah. Alright. So, the pudding is very loosely held together at this point. It's it's like split apart into a few smaller little blobs and they're all weakly moving towards each other. Uh, the orb is still in its area, right? So it will have to roll to... And also yeah. Kana's going to back off so she doesn't get damaged by the orb. Mm -hmm. Alright, so when does the orb make you roll? Is it end of turn or start of turn? Creature that ends its turn within five feet of the sphere must make it a steady save as well. Okay. Uh... So, of the sort of four smaller little sections of the lob, one of them manages to kind of move, move itself towards another one, and they sort of absorb together again. But the other two are unable to get any purchase and move, and they are burned up through their proximity to the fiery orb. All right. Our last one struggles briefly trying to kind of move towards Kale and all his tasty, tasty metal to corrode. But the flames of the fiery orb are too much and it is sort of dried out and collapses collapses down into a bubbling, hissing, smoking little patch on the ground. There's very there's a tiny little bit of actual physical remains here, but mostly it's just boiling off in a way now that it's not moving around anymore. Alright. And it is slain. Alright. Nice job, team. It's now Cypress's turn to be to act less than professional. She's gonna run up and she's just gonna start kicking and scattering all the ashes and dried out this giving it no chance to reincorporate itself, <laughs> even if it got doused with water or something, because mm -hmm. She does not like this thing. Okay. So, all right. so after this, all scattered about and spread, I'm assuming far away from the waters. Yes. All right. Once she's done that, she's going to turn around, sort of in a huff, and she's going to try and do what she was doing before, which is see what ha what's going on with these stones that are more that kind worn. of looked worn and traveled on. Yeah. All right. So, as you. As you kind of hop out on them, you see that, yes, these absolutely have been moved on and traveled on. There's something here. Uh, All right. Um, she's going to announce this to the group. Okay. Which, that's going to perk up on Kana's and Kale's ears. Tucker, not so much. But, he, but he'll but he still, you know, be curious enough to want to just wait in the water and thanks to his height. It's just a waiting pool to him, I'm yeah. guessing. Uh, yeah, as he... As it moves towards this kind of central spot, it starts to get deep and deep and deep, and he would be head underwater at that point. But over, uh, Cypress follows the path of the moved-on stones, and she can see, examining closely, there's actually a seam on the wall there, and it looks like it can be moved to be opened. All right. Uh, if you got Kale or someone strong over there to help open it. You could probably pry it open. Kale will actually travel over. While he's doing that, Tucker's actually going to 
he's going to notice the poor condition of of Cypress's uh, spear now. Mm-hmm. So he's actually going to reach behind him and he's going to unhook his old spear okay. that he keeps with him. And he's actually going to hand it to Cypress while she moves out of the way to let Kale do his thing. Okay. So, here. You'll need this later on. All right. So Cypress now has Tucker's old big spear. Yeah. Uh, Kale manages to kind of pry open this big, this big heavy door. Uh, being over in the water is actually pretty nice as well. The smoke is kind of clearing out and heading off that way, going mm-hmm. up and out of the cave structure. Well, when Cypress thanks, or she just uh, she smiles at Tucker for his offer, mm-hmm. but she also realizes, yeah, it's a bit too big for her. But she holds on to it anyways, just because she's not going to be rude to the seven foot Goliath. Yeah, That's but she's probably a good good idea. Yeah, when she trades places with Kale, she's going to keep up an, a watch, just making mm-hmm. sure that once again they're not getting snuck up on. Yeah, while Kale tries coming. to pry open this seam. All right, so. Uh... Give me a perception check to see if you're not being snuck up on oh, from, from Cyprus, and then okay. a... S- a- so yeah, we'll call this athletics for Kale. Plus five for perception. That's a nine. All right. As far as Cyprus can tell, nothing's coming. Oh, boy. Um, and Kale, with an athletics of... Where are you, Kale? I mean, at least plus five. Let's see, athletics... Uh, plus five. He's at a plus seven on athletics. Lordy. All right. Yeah. There's he, a crit. He There's is technically a crit for him. An but attack that's a, crit. Yeah, I know. But that's a twenty-six. He attacks the wall with critical fervor <laughs> and wrenches this shoddy little goblin door open, like it flies off in his hands. All right. And uh, you he's going to look up and just go, "Whoops." He's not used to his new strength. Actually, he was actually. Yeah. He once he came down from his battle high, he was kind of shocked at what he had done to the to the mm-hmm. orc. Uh, so past the door, you see a big open chamber about as large as this. It's the water continues and floods in for a little bit, but then it's mostly dry ground, and it looks like this is the goblins' hoard room. This is where they put all their treasures and stuff, which means ninety five percent of it is garbage and shiny rocks, but um, some small amount of it is actual valuables. There, There's around, if you take the time to actually count it out, you could find out exactly how much gold and silver pieces there are. All right. And uh, in the center of the room, there is a large, a large carved idol, like all the way up to the ceiling. It looks like this room was actually carved around it, it's a pillar from top to bottom, ceiling to floor. It's a very stylized. Think like a. Think like a Native American sort of totem, sort of, thing, but it's just one giant crocodile-looking totem. Off to the side, there's, where there should be, like a the side of the head. There's two more heads on the side. So it's like a full, a regular head, and then the jaws coming out on the side as well. Hmm. And there's something dripping out of the, something sort of stylistically dripping out of the mouth on the carved totem. There's a lot of detail, way more than you would expect from, expect to see from goblins. And it looks very old. Looks like it's the first thing that was here. Hmm. All right. Well, Kana, they can practically hear the uh, the cha-ching coming from Kana from Kana's brain. She's going to gather up all the gold pieces she can find, anything that's not garbage, anything that's worth actually worth something. Okay. She's going to gather up and uh, store away. All right. Give me a investigation roll from Kana. I think she actually is decent at that. Let's see here, Kana. Investigation is at a... Nope, plus two. Probably better still than others. That's a 13. All right. Uh, She manages to pick around and pick through and find about 150 gold pieces or so. And there's a couple vials of some sort of liquid. It's a very... It's a black, sort of oily-looking liquid. 
and a clear and some clear vials. All right. And you find a couple small rings with that are covered in grime and kind of really dirty. You would have to take a while to wash them off to find out what's on them. All right. Uh, in the meantime, Cypress is actually well. No, Takra is going to investigate that totem. Okay. Since he's probably got the best bet at figuring out what the heck it is. You know, after Kale ripped it off, he's going to join Cypress in trying to guard the entrance okay. while Kana and Takra investigate. Okay. Kale didn't see anything that could help him fight, so he lost mm-hmm. interest. All right, so how are Kana and Takra seeing in this dark room? Torch. Okay. No, that's fine. Uh, so in the torchlight, Tucker gets a good look at the features of the creature. And he absolutely recognizes it as, as a totem, as such as a culture would worship, kind of a god in nature. All right. And from his knowledge, he knows that long ago when these sorts of things were common, it was often... It often was that there was a monster or something. There was like a, if it was a deer, there was a giant deer that was causing problems, and that's why people had deer statues. Or it was a huge lion that was terrorizing people, and that's why people worshipped the lion. So he thinks it's logical to say there must have been some kind of giant crocodile thing here Hmm. at some point. Maybe the goblins... Wor- tried to worship it to avoid it eating them. Hmm. And then once they started worshiping it, they probably saw it eating them as paying sacrifices to it and thought that it was working, rather than realizing it just kept eating goblins. <laughs> right. But it's, it's definitely an interesting thing. Uh, perhaps you'll find out, perhaps he'll be able to find out more about it if he asks around, finds some, talks to local people. All right. So they're going to exit, and since they've sca- they scavenged what they can, mm-hmm. Tucker's going to douse the... Uh, well, you know what? By now, he's. Re- I think they're kind of accepting that No, they're not going to sneak up on anybody in here. Yeah. Either they're going to mess up on, on their stealth rolls, or everybody's got dark vision. So, yeah. They're just going to keep the torch lit. Okay. Eventually, we're going to find a, band- a group of human bandits, and then dark vision is going to kick butt. If it's in the dark. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, so uh, where are you going to go from here? They're heading back in. Okay. Very, very much keeping their ears and eyes open. All right. And uh, so now, if you remember, you have... Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Warg, ne- warg, like nest, warg nests. And a crown. And a crown. going to check out the mushrooms. Okay. I'm just working my way clockwise. So, you go down through Whee! a nest... Whee! Through the big cave, as you're actually going down, you find that there is a blockaded, a big blockaded branch coming off of the tunnel. Hmm. The stones look like they are fairly recently placed there, but there are some stones that look like they've been there for a long time. They're starting to grow over with moss from like the, all the stuff that's happening. Tucker is going to attempt to shift around these stones with the mold earth cantrip that his his staff gives him. Okay. Uh, what would you like to do with them? Have them sink into the ground underneath. Okay. Before you do that, I'm going to tell you, written on them in kind of goblin parlance is a skull and crossbones and the words go away. Would you still like to move the... Tucker can't read goblin. Okay. Uh, he recognizes the skull and crossbones, but also... But he doesn't know exactly what that means. Yeah. Also, it's kind of hard in the torchlight. Okay. I'm going to regret this. But I'm not going back on my word either. So, in that case, y'all are over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Tucker's going to have to be in the front here. Right. To move those around. Uh, as you start shifting them and moving them around, sinking them down, you hear, you begin to hear some shifting and some scattering as if people are, something's moving around within the, within there. Uh, the stones 
kind of begin to finally move down and there's enough room for you to climb over top of them, get out, like get into the area. Mm -hmm. Would you like to advance in there? Yes. Okay, come on in. Uh, you see a fairly large, a fairly large area spread about our large, so these uh, circles are large boulders that are overgrown with mushrooms and moss and lichen. Okay. The uh, smaller ones are, again, boulders. These colored in things are stalagmites and stalactites. Here are a bunch of boulders that look like they've been there for a while. It looks like they, it looks like whoever is inside here has been taking boulders away from this barricade, trying to move them out of the way to escape. So I might have had to fight it anyways eventually. And there is a similar barricade over here, albeit a much thicker one. There are two of the large, kind of warg nest-esque areas. One here, immediately by your entrance, and another one over here. And make a perception check with Tukra, your front of the line there. Uh-oh. Tukra's perception is at a zero... Oh, no. Oh! It's decent. He's got Plus good six. Some. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank goodness. That is an 18 in total. All right. So... You notice scattered about, so scattered about the uh, cavern, you notice these even scragglier goblins with small kind of mushrooms and tumorous glands growing off of them. Yeah. Scattered about. There are two peeking out from the nest immediately here. One is hide, trying to hide fruitlessly behind that boulder. And two more are peeking out of this nest here. Are these red caps? No, but there are red caps somewhere around here. <sighs> Not within this cave structure, but nearby, near Forest Home. Can Tucker run a some kind of knowledge check? A nature check, maybe? or a uh, Yes, he can. Survival check, or I guess... He can do a... Well, what, do, what does he want to find out? What does he... What exactly these things are, if he knows them from nature, if he knows what they can do. Oh, they're, they're goblins. But something is desperately wrong with them. That, so I guess he's, uh, he's trying to find case, out... He's trying to see exactly why these goblins are the way they are. Okay. What, why, in that why case, make a nature check up? for me. Unbelievably, this, uh, this druid has a zero to nature. He's got zero to, as an intelligence <laughs> mod. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Roll that. Roll yeah. that baby up. Hey, he hasn't had any actual schooling. He's been taught by, you know, he was taught by a guy. But not. But yeah, okay, fair enough. He was taught to be wise, not to be smart. We'll leave it at that. All right. All right. Uh, so what was that? Uh, that is zero. That's a seven. That's a seven. All right. Uh, faint memories about his uh, his druid elder telling him about the various sorts of afflictions that exist for wild animals and people living people living out in the wild come back to him but all he knows is that they're sick he doesn't know what's ha he doesn't know what they have he doesn't know if it's contagious he doesn't know how it spreads right. he's just fairly certain they're probably sick that worries Tucker greatly, so he's actually going to he's going to take the initiative mm -hmm. and actually try and cast Flaming Sphere. Okay. Uh, where is he putting that baby? Boop. And then he's going to try and ignite the nest that those two goblins are hiding in. Okay, so he's going to try and light the nest on fire. Yeah. Roll damage. If you roll enough dam if you roll enough damage, it will set the it will set it on fire. Two d six, right? Yes. Four damage. All right. Uh. The nest begins to smolder, but it does not catch. Mm. But the orb is, or the sphere is still there, so you'll be able to roll for more damage he didn't next ram time. He didn't do anything by having it ram into the nest? Well, the ram just makes the damage happen. Got it. But next time, at the end of Tucker's, or uh, at the end of each round, we'll do damage on the nest. Once you get enough damage, it will light up. All right. And Tucker, as a, as a uh, mm -hmm. free action, he's going to yell back to the crew, Take them out quickly. They're sick. 
I don't want to know what happens if we catch what they've got. Okay. All right, now I would like you to roll initiative for your guys. Okay. So this one's for Tukra. He's at a 14. Okay. This one is for Kana. The plus four, she rolled a six. Kana's not feeling the best in terms of speed. <laughs> this one's for Cyprus. That's a 12. This one's for Kale. At a 11. All right, so our first friend to go is our buddy hiding behind the rock. All right. He, uh... Hearing, hearing, uh... Tucker cast that spell, he kind of peeks around, realizes that they know he's there, and throws himself at at Tukra. Sort of no fear, no hesitance, no anything. Just throws his entire body at Tukra. All right. He uh, makes two attacks. He flails his kind of clawed up fingers. They're tense and stuck in these horrible contorted positions. Tries to claw at his face and tries to bite his bite his arm, neck, chest, anything he can reach. That comes out to an 11 or a 6. 13. All right. right. And I'm not sure if his his fancy vest gives him anything else. Uh, no, just looking suave and fancy. All right. And And spell tiny tiny hut once per day. All right, so... The uh, ineffectual scramblings just put him very close... There's obviously a kind of noxious, gross air around him. For some reason, I'm just thinking of going... <laughs> yeah, that, that is what he's doing. All right, and also, roll damage on the nest again for me. Got it. That is six damage. All right. The uh, nest begins to smolder and flame even more, but it is not yet fully lit. Crime nitly, man. This thing is a tough nest. It's also dank, a, so I understand. Yeah, we're in a dank underground place. I'm just right. waiting for it to actually catch fire, at which point I'm just going to break out into burn, baby, burn! <laughs> and then the flaming street is just going to st- start going up and then it's twirling like a disco ball. It's a literal disco inferno. Come on! Give me that one. I'm doing math. I'm working hard over here, okay, man. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I'm juggling like 18 numbers at once. I wasn't expecting you to be here yet. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's, that's why it's here. It's an option. Uh, Alright, so that, so they take... He rolled six there, you said? Mm-hmm. That's how much they got. So now, the buddies down here in the second nest, they can kind of tentatively move out. This fella moves this way, climbs up onto the rock, perches there. This guy crosses out. 30. Looks straight, kind of looks straight forwards at you, at you guys with cloudy, blinded eyes. There's absolutely no response to being in the torchlight or being not the, not the light. And now it is, now it is uh, Tukra's turn. All right, Tukra's going to try and cast Frost Blast on the little guy that was clawing at him. Okay. The Frostbite. How's that work again? Is it just uh, Frostbite? Failed save takes 1d6. Okay, so yeah, it's save save for none. So 1d6 damage, not 2d4. Yeah. So uh you kind of reach out and squeeze and sort of clench your hand, causing frost to grow up around the feet and area, but the goblin sort of sends a shiver through its lower body and the frost crystal frost crystals just sort of break off, fall down shimmer off, and it has no real effect on the goblin. Alright, for a bonus action, I'm going to have it circle around and bash down into the nest again. Okay. The flaming sphere just... Go ahead and do damage. If he can't freeze him, he's gonna burn him. Three damage. Alright. That is finally enough to make the nest burst into flame. Yay! That also causes the goblins within to take. And now they're going to 
continue, basically continue to take damage until they are able to leave. Every round, they'll take another 1d6 fire damage. Hmm. Uh, same for anyone that is inside of the inside of the nest. Got it. So now it is Kale's turn, or uh, sorry, Cypress's turn. You guys are also close in the order now. Yeah. All right, Cypress doesn't have much in the way of ranged attacks, so she's just gonna fling. Her, she's gonna throw her spear at the closest goblin. Okay. Her uh-huh. damaged spear. All right. She's the yeah. You know, or actually, maybe she'll. Th- I don't know. Uh, maybe um, she'll throw Typer's spear, since that's at max damage. Either, I mean, either one, whichever you like. Just to, um, you know, she could, she could sterilize it later. I'm not sure what you're gonna do with disease in this game, man. You gotta, I mean, you gotta get sick to find out. Well, I just, I'm just thinking about what it does to equipment to have it fight diseased creatures. But yeah, she's throwing the spear. So is that, okay. is that uh, a disadvantage, or is that because she knows how to use a spear? Is that at adva- at standard? I know they can be. Yeah. No disadvantage, no anything. Okay. Just 1d6. Okie doke. Well, once I actually hit or not. Yeah. And he's going to target this one here that's trying to sneak in. The one that's just kind of walking up? Okay. Yeah. That is 14 plus 4, or no, plus 6, sorry. Alright, that'll be a hit. Alright, so 1d6 plus 4, that's max damage for Ooh. 10. Ouchies. Yeah, I'm glad Cypress joined the party. She's really not had much to do since I generated her. Alright, uh, would you like to use your bonus action to attack or do anything? I'm not getting close enough to actually let them try and... Okay. I'd rather not find out what happens if I try and strike them with with bare fists. All right. Actually, you know, as long as I don't break skin, well, it's kind of the nature of... It's kind of the nature orders. of a damaging blow. Yeah. I think I better play it safe. All right. Cypress doesn't take... She's not to the level of mastery of her monkhood yet that she's safe from disease, so... Mm-hmm. She's a little cautious of that. All right. So now it is Kale's turn. Kale's going to pull out his crossbow. Is almost Ooh. never used crossbow, which has a I plus one to he hit. Even had a crossbow. Yeah. So he's at plus one to a hit plus with that. Plus one to hit. Yeah. How? Because he gets proficiency with it. Oh, crossbows don't use strength in this anymore. Nope. That's weird. Yeah. All right. But Re- remember, I thought it was a plus six, and then you reminded me. I forgot about that. <laughs> yep. All right, but uh, yeah. Plus Go. one to hit. Go for it. He's got a shot. Yeah. Got a shot at a shot. 14. In total. Ugh. All right, that'll be a hit. All right, and he was targeting... Is that the one that got hit with the spear dead? Uh, no. Okay. But it's not looking well. It's got a big spear. It's got... Which spear did you use? Tuckers. It's got a gigantic spear bursting out of its chest. Kale's going to fall up and try and hit it. Just trying to take out one, one disease monger. Okay. Go. So that is our damage. I don't even know how many bolts he's got with this thing. Did you roll damage yet? Uh, I have not rolled damage yet. All right. Probably yeah, 20 bolts. We haven't gotten any other crossbow arrows. Yep, 20 bolts. I don't think he's used one yet. Yep, 20 bolts. Okay. Uh, so that's 1d8 plus 5. It, the, the damage is... Um, what kind of crossbow is it? Just a crossbow. Uh, sure. I thought there was... It just said crossbow in the equipment. All right, this shows how little we use crossbows. Yep. So you were right originally, 1d8. 1d8, yeah. That's but why I, I was confused. I was yeah. like, it should be in the martial weapons, but there's no light crossbow there. Yeah, simple range weapon. So it's 1d8 plus... Plus 5, or...? Uh, it? it would be... It's a ranged weapon, so that's plus dex, so that would so, be minus 1. Okay. That is 2 damage, then. 2 <sighs> damage? All right. This is why he doesn't use his crossbow often. He, perhaps he should use it more often, though, because, well, maybe he shouldn't. Depends on how you feel about the bolts going into this goblin's head through one of those kind of cloudy, milky eyes, and the head bursts open in a violent explosion of spores. 
so there is a 20 foot area now outlined kind of here so from I have, mar- I have pens here somewhere so yeah suddenly very glad that he's far away enough this whole area so wait Kana so and Tucker cut off. Kana and Tucker are in the area alright can Kana take so, an immediate uh, reaction to hold her breath I mean yes yeah, she can hold her breath because that is one of her superpower abilities yep so that happens there. Okay. So any creature that begins their turn in that cloud of spores needs to make a constitution saving throw. That's his only other or good stat. Or something happens. That's his only other good stat besides his wisdom. He's at a plus two. Well, actually, whose turn is it? Uh, so Kale just went, so Kana is up next. Alright. But she is holding her breath, yeah. obviously. So she does not need to make the save because she's holding her breath. Right. Um, she's going to back out, or back away from the... She shouldn't be in the nest. Yeah, she's like... I assume she was standing like right here next to the nest, or yeah. in this little corner between the nest and there. Yeah. Um, are the spores being burnt up by the by the flame at all? By the flaming sphere? Interesting point. I'm gonna say somewhat. Okay. Uh, very, so kind of the area around here is being cleared out. So the nest area is gonna be clear. Probably by the top of the order it'll be clear. Okay. But... The spores around it don't seem to be getting affected by, like, the heat or anything. They're kind of just floating, waiting, staying where they are. Fire almost seems to be creating an immobilizing sort of heat draft. So they're staying, so rather than sort of slowly sinking to the floor, they're being risen up gently, ever so gently by the fire. Okay. Um, Kana is going to get out of the spore field. Okay. And she's going to take a shot at... The bozo who tried to doesn't really want to attack the bozo who attacked Tekra. Uh, not unless if it's going to, uh, or maybe she would just not target the head. But she's going to test. Actually, she's going to try to try and take a shot at Mister Standy over there. Okay. Who's far enough away that if he does explode, even if you don't hit him in the head, they'll know All right. and they won't be affected. All right. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Lombo. Because she w- she did strike with her dagger previously, so that's a fourteen in total. All right, that'll be a hit. All right. Unfortunately, she doesn't get sneak attack on that, but this is not the their conventional combat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's uh, let's see, short bow. That's one six plus four. That's nine damage. Nice. These goblins have burned up in the pyre, releasing. Because eh, they burn up in the pyre, they release a. Basically just a gross smoke leaving behind this kind of wet blobby pile of mush of like mushroom and spores and things down low in that uh nest sort of area. Alright. Alright, so now we're back up to the top. We've got rock goblin ready to go again. It's gonna rock and roll. Making his desperate <laughs> kind of attack which one of them is lucky enough to find purchase. His uh, kind of clawed hands manage to clasp around Tukra for just long enough to try and sort of tear into his flesh with their scabby nails. That is one point of damage. All right, Tucker's down to 30. All right, now our other fellow here going to advance. He again stares forwards blankly with those blank blind eyes. Alright. And now it is Tukra's turn. I'd like him to make me a con save. Come on. Plus two. Come on. Anything he's, has he got anything that would help with this? Powerful build, mountain born, ritual casting, druidic. Nope. Come on, baby. That's right. plus that's a four in total. 
That's a failure. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Well, Why is Unfortunately. It? The two has to be right next to the twenty. Well, it's because the die has to taunt you too. Yeah. All right. Tukra inhales these spores and coughs and gags for a moment, but otherwise nothing seems to happen. Okay, as a bonus action, he's going to shift the shift the fire orb over so that it slams into the two goblins, and also hopefully just starting to bake away some of the spores in the area. Okay. So that is a save for these guys. They both fail desperately, All right. so roll that damage for me. Is it just going to apply to both of them, the same amount of damage? Yeah. Got it. That is seven damage. Seven damage. All right. Our nest fellow here burns away into ash and dust, but our fellow from the rock is still doing fine, actually. He really has some serious vim and vigor to him, despite being ill. Deathly yeah. ill. I mean, clearly he gets the most exercise. He was the only one not asleep in bed when y'all came in. True. I'm guessing he's the one who's been moving the rocks. That is true. Uh, we do now get to see Cypress move. Or Cypress go. So she's what gonna, is she going to do? She's going to draw her second spear, the one that has been da- that was damaged by the slime, and try okay. and take take him out that way from, from a distance. Okay, throwing it again. Yeah. Go ahead and make that attack. That's an eight. An eight total is not good enough. All spear right. kind of... She tries to line it up and throw it, but Tukra moves unexpectedly because he's coughing, and she has to, like, oh, yeah. toss it off a little bit in the distance. All right. Would you like to do anything else? Uh, she's going to back away. All right. Now it is uh, Kale's turn. Kale's going to take out his crossbow and try and shoot, and this time not hit the head. Okay. He's going to try and shoot again. Yeah. Uh, plus one. That is an 8. Oh, no, that's a 10. That is a 10. That is just good enough. Sweet. All right, so that is a 1d8 plus, or minus 1. Oh, dear God. That's 4 damage. All right, the bolt sinks in deeply into the flesh. But our goblin buddy is still going strong. Sweet Lord almighty. He is scratching and scapering, ready for another fight. (laughs) But it's Kana's turn now. <laughs> and what is she going to do? Fire off that that short bow of hers. That All deadly, right. deadly short bow. Go ahead, take your shot, Kana. That is a 14. That's good enough to hit. All right, that's a 1d6 plus 4. That's 5 damage. That is enough to take him out. All right. And he explodes into another bountiful group of spores. What Does the fireball have an effect on that? Uh, it will clear out some of the spores in its area, but the spores kind of explode outwards from the force of being punctured by the arrow. All right. Uh, so he is on the rock there, so he's on that side. So it looks like Kale is going to be caught in the blast. So I would like him to make my make me a con save. He should be good at that. Plus two. Oh! All right. At 20. Yeah, he, he rocks it. He right. also doesn't feel any ill effects. Okay, Takra is going to run a medicine check on himself once we're out of combat. And once his flaming sphere has has killed off <laughs> all the spores that are airborne. Yeah. Once so all I'm, the once all the goblins are dead, he's gonna just have the way have the sphere move around until sure, it dissipates. Like move out, get yeah. all the stuff out of the air. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> just there's a slight sli- sizzling to the air as the spores are killed off. Yeah. It smells much cleaner now, much mm. nicer in here. It smelled truly awful beforehand. Mm. Smell like sick and spores. Mm-hmm. And sickly spores. All right. So uh, what would you like to... So you want to do a medicine check on yourself? Yeah. Tucker's also going... He's going to inspect what's left of the bodies. Okay. See if he can find glean something from that. Because medicine is one thing he does know. All right. So go ahead and make that roll for me. I think he knows medicine. Thought I, yep. He's got plus six to medicine. Come on, Tucker. Let's show a little bit of that wisdom. So what what are you doing with the roll? What are you looking for with it? Anything that could indicate exactly what kind of spores he's dealing with, what kind of mushroom. But he rolled a one. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I, he he looks at like the bodies. He tries to exa he tries to think about what could possibly cause like the blind the blindness. What could cause the sort of decrepit state, the absolutely wasted away bodies. Can't think of anything. Does at he know if there's not, a, is not, there a healer back in Forest Home? There is in fact a healer back okay, in Forest good. Home. She uh, she lives off in a house right next to the woods. Hmm. Decently. A little bit away from town, but not too far. Okay. But he, he truly has no idea. He doesn't even think he's sick. He doesn't feel anything. Uh, he, and he thought he coughed out mo most of the spores, I bet. Yeah. He, he, feels, he thinks he got it all out. He thinks he's fine. Hmm. All right. Well, Tugger, then he's just going to investigate in here, see if he can find anything of worth, anything right. interesting. So while you're in here... Please be careful to show me where you're moving. He's avoiding anything that's covered in lichen or mushrooms. Okay. Never mind. You can go wherever you want then. Okay. Investigation at a 15 plus zero. All right. So you find lots of, lots of kind of scratches and scrabblings at the wall, but they are all very old. Oh. It doesn't look like anything has been hit or harmed exactly. Like, it doesn't look like things have been trying to escape for a long time. Hmm. Except for the boulders. The boulders have continued to be moved and dragged, but they're moved and dragged along exactly the same path. Like, there's one well-worn track where you can see almost every single boulder has been moved down. Right. And it seems to suggest to you that these goblins, at one point, behaved very goblin-like. They panicked. They hit each other. They tried to hit the wall. They clawed at it with their hands to try and dig out. But then they began to act strangely. They no longer were running around. They didn't try to... They didn't try to escape other than just doing these rote activities of moving things. Hmm. And as Tukra examines, he finds that uh, some of the plant life here, some of the mushrooms and lichen, are actually very poisonous like specimens. They're things that are really bad for you. Hmm. Things that would make you violently ill or like things that would make you laugh uncontrollably for hours. Things that would make you cough for days until you begin to, like, cough up blood and start to get sick from that. He's not going to take any samples, but he's going to take note of what each one is because mm -hmm. he's hoping that that will help him. He's, he's not... He's wise enough to know that he can't expect to have gotten out of this... Have, you know, having uh, inhaled spores without something happening to him, okay. possibly. So he's going to just take a strong mental note of what's around him so that he knows exactly right. what kind of specimens he he could have been exposed to. Uh, all right, so with a 15, he know, he sees that there is something that can be used as a paralytic. There's something that can be used as a, uh, like a recreational drug sort of thing, like a magic mushrooms. And there's something that would cause a, like existential dread, something that would make you panic and start to have anxiety. Those are the different kinds of noxious sort of plant life he can identify. All right. He'll keep that in mind because he's, he's pretty sure that Kana would have good use for, the, for those if they ever came back with enough, uh, with the proper precautions to procure samples. Mm -hmm. All right. So he's going to head back out and say, we'll come back later. And okay. he's just going to walk down. Kale, they're all going to show concern because... Yeah, he him being so quiet about it just means that there's definitely he's they know when Tucker's concerned about something, mm -hmm. but they're just gonna follow along because right now what matters is right. was is finishing the mission. So as soon as he comes out of this area, he yeah. notices there are a lot of the same kinds of plants of lichens and mushrooms in this in this field of kind of mushrooms there. Does he see anything similar over here? Uh that is too far for him to see. But he does also see, oh, this actually, this might be a good place to call it for now. Because he sees a lot of people in here. Oh, boy. Uh, All right. Well, 
you heard the DM, guys. That sounds like a good place to call for tonight. And yeah, this seems like a good length too. So, well, thank you, Riley, for composing all this. So far, I'm really enjoying the dungeon. Oh yeah, I can't wait. We're gonna we're just getting to the fun parts. Oh boy. Uh, here's hoping. I'm hoping that all of you have, who have been following along have enjoyed Tucker as much as me, and hoping that he pulls through this because I don't want Tucker to die. We'll find out in somewhere between one to four days. Doggone it. Well, hopefully by that time he'll have sought out the healer. Yeah. Oh. Well, all right. So we made it through our little aqu my little aquifer area. We went through and saw the afflicted goblins, which I was worried you would never actually go visit, but I'm happy you did. And now we've made it to my favorite room of the entire place, just because I have it named after a pun. The mushroom. Ha! Ah, I like it. Oh. Alright, well thank you all, and we will see you for the next one, which will happen a lot sooner than, the, than this one did. Oh yeah. Alrighty, have a good night, y'all.